Hey guys, I hope you're all happy and healthy and well at the moment. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about grow poles. So first up, what is a grow pole? So a grow pole, as I'm going to call it, is something that you grow a plant up. The main reason that you would want to use one is because you have a vining style of plant. So these guys here are all on grow poles, probably the most traditional style of whoop, vining style plant is this Monstera Adansoni I, um, who will get a bit lanky if you don't grow him up something or trellis him along a wall or something like that. So it's a way to grow a plant that may sometimes be grown as a trailing plant, like your Epipremnum or Pothos varieties, your Syndapsis. I've got a Raphidophora tetrasperma here and here. This is a Raphidophora decasiva or a dragon's tail. And then I also have a Monstera deliciosa. There's different kinds of grow poles. The most commonly commercially available type is the Coco Core fiber pole that you can pick up for about eight dollars for a bigger one than this from Bunnings. Um, this one came with my Raphidophora tetrasperma who perished and I had to chop him up and propagate him so I put him back into a smaller pot actually than he had traditionally came in now that he has all these cuttings. The next most commonly known of or talked about is a moss pole. So my Monstera Adansonii is on a, a more traditional style moss pole which has a bamboo pole in the middle, sphagnum moss around it and then gutter guard is what I've used to hold it all in place. Uh, this Raphidophora tetrasperma here is on a bamboo backed moss pole. So you can see that I have used a larger piece of bamboo, stuffed it with the moss and then use gutter guard again to keep it in place. When I'm making this type of moss pole, I zip tie the pot to the bamboo. It just gives you a bit more sort of stability. Um, and then I try to also have the bamboo at the same level as the pot so that there's extra stability there to hold it upright. Sometimes I'll put it in the pot with the plant, sometimes I'll put it outside the pot, uh, but I just cut little slits in the pot zip tie it on and then I'll add the moss and the gutter guard to this one and it'll be ready to go. The final other main type of grow pole is it's a stick basically so these two are both pretty much on sticks I guess. This one's actually a hollow piece of bark if I turn it around you can see that it's got a hollow there. Some people often stuff the back of this with sphagnum and grow it on the opposite side. I have seen people use um, like bark fencing for this style of post. This one here is literally just a stick I picked up from a park that I'm using to stake this Monstera Deliciosa up with. Um, it's nothing too fancy but I do like the look of these guys. They're a bit more natural looking so for a less leafy plant, like the Monstera Deliciosa, I like the stick ones a bit better. Now what type should you use for your plants? I think it comes down to mostly personal preference. As I said with the less leafy ones, I like the sticks because it looks a bit more natural than something more like these guys. Um, the best type to use if you're going to propagate your plants is something with the sphagnum moss in it, so this guy and this guy. The reason is the aerial roots really grow into that sphagnum and develop better and sometimes you can just snip each node if it's been growing in sphagnum and it'll be well rooted enough that you don't have to do any more propagation. It's good to go. My least favourite is the Coco Core style of poles. Um, when I was chopping up this Raphidophora tetrasperma, it had roots grown into the Coco Core and they were really hard to remove and I actually had to damage some and cut some off in order to get it off that pole. So really not very good for propagation. It's also really hard to keep the Coco Core any type of, type of moist because it doesn't absorb moisture basically, unlike the sphagnum. 
So it depends on what look you're going for, particularly with your heavily vining plants, you can get the really bushy look more so with something like a sphagnum moss pole because it's going to be happier to attach to that pole in lots of different places and you can get the real bushy Instagram look to your plants that a lot of people are chasing at the moment. So there's kind of a final type of pole which I don't currently use because I'm lazy and that's a self-watering moss pole. So often people will make these with a piece of poly pipe in the middle that they fill the water up into. I've seen some people use a string that wraps around the outside of the poly pipe and it will wick water from the inside out into the sphagnum. And then I've also seen some people who put really small holes all through the poly pipe so that it slowly leaks out. I don't know, it probably doesn't work as well as the one with the wick, but that's another option. I'm not super stressed on keeping my sphagnum moss poles 100% damp all the time. In fact, I let mine dry out regularly. Probably it's more important to keep them more moist if you're in a lower humidity environment than I am. Um, in my environment, I have one that I keep really damp and it's quite moldy looking, um, mossy maybe, I don't know. It's growing something else on the sphagnum. And that's what my Raptor for a Cryptanthra is growing on, which is a flat moss pole. It's pretty similar to making any other moss pole. You just make it flat with two pieces of gutter guard. And that is constantly wet. I water it probably every two or three days. So you can expect like that green algae type growth on constantly damp sphagnum. It's just normal, it happens. I have seen some people say that it's detrimental to plants if you get too much of it, which I mean, if it changes the pH to something really acidic or alkaline, I can see where that would be a problem. I haven't really looked into it though because it's not an issue for me. I don't let my moss stay wet enough that that happens, uh, but I know that it can be an issue. The next question is probably, should you use a grow pole or do you need to use a grow pole? And the answer is no. Um, it's completely up to you what you want your plant to look like. Uh, with your plants like your Monstera Deliciosa, they will start to sprawl a bit because their natural growth habit is to grow across the ground until they find a tree to climb and then they'll climb the tree. Um, Pretty similar with the Raphidophora decursiva and your Raphidophora tetraspermas, I think you're better off putting them on a pole because they will attach to your walls and damage them if you don't have something else for them to attach to. Um, other things like this Philodendron uh, Brazil, you can grow it on a pole if you want and they look great, otherwise you can grow them more trailing. The main difference you'll find is that the leaves get bigger as they grow up the pole. So if you want the big mature leaves that you see sometimes people particularly in northern Queensland have, then the way to get that is by using a pole. But if you're happy for more of like a small leaf shrubby look more like this, then it's perfectly fine to grow it like this. Drape the trails back over, let some hang down that's not going to hurt the plant, it's not going to be detrimental to the plant, it'll be just as happy as long as you provide it with enough water and light. Probably the final question is like how to water a moss pole or how often to water a moss pole. As I said I don't keep mine super damp, this one is pretty well dried out at the moment as is that one. I only water them when the actual plant itself needs watering. I tend not to water the plant itself, just the pole and let that seep into the soil. Ha, I stabbed myself. Ah. I have seen people who do it once a week. I feel like that would overwater my plants. I probably only do it like once every two weeks for most of them and that's even in summer. Um, so it just depends on how often your plant needs watering. Um, I will tend to 
lean them up at an angle kind of like that just to make sure that all the excess water drips out of the drainage holes before I pop them back to where they normally sit um, because it will dribble out a bit over time. I also try to leave like a gap there so the sphagnum moss isn't all the way down the bottom and in touch with the soil so it's not keeping the soil damp itself um, and I think that that would help with not overwatering. So that's pretty much all I have to say about grow poles. Um, I have some videos of making some grow poles, different types of grow poles, um, which you can have a look at if you want to see more about how I make the ones I use. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much it. Use them, don't use them, it doesn't really matter. Your plants will probably be happy anyway. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.